Despite the many opportunities for growth in my life, there were seasons where I was completely unopened to it. And I think if we are being honest and authentic about our journey, especially if you are in the spiritual or conscious community, sometimes it's harder for us to see ourselves. Our pride and our ego get so bruised when despite our intentions, our actions aren't coming across as open, loving, and accepting as much as we had hoped. And because we assume our ego is completely out the window, the circumstance is forcing us to acknowledge something that we already believe in our minds is gone. And because we think we have done the work to know ourselves more or better than anyone else, it does not negate someone outside of ourselves' ability to see us and see through us. And it takes acknowledging and accountability and empathy to see a person outside of ourselves as one and keep honesty through mistakes and through the pain that we experience as much as the pain that we cause others. In this video, I will discuss how my inability to acknowledge an opportunity for growth was just a gateway to hurt the people that I love. Let's get started. What we don't heal, we transfer. This phrase is used very generally in relationships, platonic, romantic. This is why the lack of accountability is so dangerous. Because the people who only see accountability as blame never possess the empathy enough to apologize for the damage done. The healing seldom happens because not only will the person who initiated the act never change, but in the pain of no resolve, the person it happens to feels more justified in inflicting that same pain to someone else, thus creating a pandemic of unhealed trauma that neither one of us are given a stimulus check for enduring. I think being your authentic self is so important because it allows us to be seen and it welcomes natural mistakes. Most of us are masking majority of who we are and what we feel, and because our authentic truth is left unchecked, we never allow experiences to teach us all of the wonderful lessons we need to learn. We very seldom allow ourselves to be seen. Much of the things we do and have done to others, no one knows about. And for privacy's sake, I completely understand not everyone should know. But if you do have a trusted friend or someone to confide in about your mistakes just as much as your triumphs, I would keep that. What I feel the divine has taught me is that much of my gratitude should go to the people in my life I'm safe repenting to. Repentance should go to the divine, but sometimes when we possess the courage to repent to the people who care for us, it builds community that... He wants for us, but it also helps us hold one another accountable in ways we can't possibly do on our own. It's like we need people not to follow us, but someone with our full story to understand the weight of our wins and clap for us and the impact of our falls to hold us up when times are hard and also hold us accountable when our heads are hard. When we stop being victims, we stop creating victims. The same thing as hurt people hurt people. I realized the things that I chose to hold on to from my past were just giving me an excuse to give others the same tacky and distasteful experience. For example, I've been around people in my life who felt like where they were in their life and where I was and mine was a reason to make me feel unworthy or that I wasn't doing enough. A person once had me convinced that because I wasn't a successful creator or actress, despite possessing the talent and had developed enough craft to be successful or had a lineup of opportunities coming my way, I wasn't worthy of being acknowledged in their life. But because maybe at the time I was just a humble fitness instructor that was also working nights at a grocery store to kind of offset the financial damage that the pandemic had and had been causing, I wasn't necessarily on their level. Because my ambition at the time had to do more for my survival than highlighting my creative abilities, to them, it just seemed like I was wasting my time or that I hadn't had my life figured out yet. I had a YouTube at the time, but it was struggling. And for people outside of this world, they feel that having no YouTube at all is better than having a struggling looking one. And that's completely false. Like, instant gratification is completely damaging us socially. People don't understand what it takes to actually 
make something work or actually put in the work to make something worthwhile. And because I'm not ashamed of my humble beginnings as much as someone outside of me is, it's it's so crazy. Like if you are starting anything new, I want you to know that it's necessary for the people around you not to understand or feel like they have the power to shit on whatever you're doing, but know that those people that have the most to say have really never built anything. It's the people that are successfully building a brand, building a business, have an a substantial foot to stand on knows the amount of work and energy it takes to do so. They know how many times that they failed. They know how many times that no one saw, no one understood. So if there's anyone in your life that's trying to discredit your humble beginnings, God is just going to bless you so hard in their face and you have to be made an example in such a harsh way, but it's like that's the only way they're going to see that their priorities are completely effed. Like, I don't know anyone that was successful that didn't have humble beginnings. It was so traumatic. But in that pain, I unknowingly did it to someone else and I thought that I was being helpful. But I had to come to realize, like, someone did this to them. There was a person in their life that made them feel like wherever they are was a reason to not be worthy of love or not be worthy of acceptance. And in their efforts to want to help me from not feeling the way that they felt, they inflict the same ignorance and unconscious pain onto other people. Everyone's journey is different. We can't expect someone's 15-year investment to look like someone's five-year investment. And unfortunately, in my pain, I have in ways inflicted that same toxic expectation that if I'm working on something severely and I'm chasing my dreams, if you are not in a point in your life where you are focused on something just as much as I am, then I didn't have much to offer you but to be fair if i just genuinely love them for who they are and accept every part of them the pace of their life and what they choose to do is completely outside of my experience with them it has absolutely nothing to do with me and i to me it's inauthentic for people to only collaborate with people that are doing the same things as them to a point where they don't feel you're worthy of getting to know because they don't know how they can use your life as a way to inflate their ego. People that assume that they have to be around people that are more successful than them because it does something when they can say they know X, Y, and Z, but the people that have always been there in their life, the people that have seen them and maybe on completely different paths, they don't know how to keep relationships with those people. Sometimes things in our lives change, status changes financially our circumstances change but who we are when we don't have all of those things like our actual being I don't think that that's necessarily something that should change maybe it should be more refined but if I was blessed with a best friend for seven to eight years and they've never shown me signs of hate they've always been there to support me when I am in a season of my life where I have more through the support that they've given me, I'm not going to abandon that friendship because we don't have the same life. Or the people that have best friends and then they have children and that person just does not know how to be friends because they're in a different journey in their lives. Like, I understand why a lot of people are hurt by that because it's like, I'm no different. I just have more to love, you know? If I love someone in my life for genuine reasons, the pace of their life has absolutely nothing to do with me. I want someone to actually move forward in their life because that's what they want for themselves. I want what they want for themselves just as much as they want it. But the pace of what that is has absolutely nothing to do with me. And I think it is a person's ego that is looking outward at people in their lives they can use to inflate their ego. 
and I never want to be one of those types of people. Um, I realize how damaging it is because it's a pain that I've experienced and um, yeah, not cool. I think bottom line, when we learn, we have so much more to offer the people that we love and just people in general. After acknowledging the areas in my character that needed healing, I was a lot more helpful to others because what I used to assume in people was this is just how they are and who they are. I now clearly see as this is how their pain has manifested in their being. And because I recognize pain clearly or clearer than I ever have before, I'm able to be a safe space for others if they let me. Not gonna lie, it's not easy at first because no one likes to be seen as their younger damaged self or no one likes to be told or shown that they're in need of help. And maybe that person that we're talking about doesn't realize that maybe they talk so much about their work and their wins because they feel insecure and unworthy when they're not. Or they act aggressively because they never got the protection they deserved growing up. We, I'm saying like we the people who want to heal and bring about healing into our families, into our, into our relationships, into our lives, are always up for slaughter because we have enough love, time, and patience to have the hard conversations that no one even notices are worthy of being had. And because we have all day, it just makes people really uncomfortable. You know what I'm talking about? So if you are... A person in a setting where your eyes are open to see the pain in your loved ones, I pray you're given the patience and the grace to present the right conversations to those who need it, not to attack, but because it needs acknowledging. And it's the holidays and the emotions are high and we're all around our loved ones or the people that we've known and feelings are coming up. Now, I'm personally at an age where I'm seeing people in my life as human beings, not by their titles in my life. And it's not only helpful and knowledgeable, but it's very jarring sometimes the things that we conceptualize by our experiences with these people. But I think it all comes full circle because then I have to realize and accept that I need the same amount of acceptance and patience and love and understanding and it just kind of becomes all a part of the fun. I think I'm finally at a point in my life where I know that I'm always going to heal and- Oh, sorry, my stomach is growling. I think I'm always- Shit. I think I'm, <laughs> I think I'm always, I think I'm finally at a point in my life where I realize that although healing is very important, it's not the center of my life. And what we're supposed to do after the healing is live now with more tools under our, under our belt and more experience and a little bit more personality because of the things that we've experienced. And what I want this YouTube channel to be is a representation of what life could become after we do the work to heal. And having the hard conversations is important, but once the conversations are over, I have to learn how to let them go and not just pull them up because they've been had Um, yeah, I think there's so many people out here having really hard conversations and it's great, but we forget in those moments that the reason why we have the conversations is to let go and to just live and to just exist as humans, not assuming that pain and things, more things to heal from won't happen, but so that when we do experience the joys of life, we're not being weighed down by our pains, that we can fully be present and where we're meant to without feeling insecure or um, just stuck in who we've been. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for being a part of my journey, being a part of my experiences. I hope you have an amazing holiday um, and I hope to see you guys in my next one. Bye.